All right, here's the push start. And obviously if you want only like, sort of like ignition on, if you, if you wanna like listen to your radio or whatever. And you can't really tell it's daylight, but the button has like red uh, light on the writing, so it's pretty cool at night. Let's test the passive keyless entry. So when I approach the car, it will unlock. So as you can see, and now when I walk away, after three seconds, it will lock. Start the engine remotely. And I can shut it off. Here's the Bluetooth app. You can see in the upper right corner the Bluetooth icon. It's currently orange, it means I'm in a close range. When it's red, it means the signal is weak, and when it's gray, it means, um, you know, uh, I'm out of range. Um, I can do basically only three things with the app. Um, uh, unlock doors, and then lock. Uh, start the engine. Now I will stop the engine. So it's a general app, uh, but again, uh, we're limited uh, in the Cayenne to all, which is more than enough. Uh, if you live in somewhere cold, like in Canada when it's minus 30, um, I tested the range. I have a detached garage, so I'm sitting at home and I can start the car um, and then when I you know, sit, uh, it'll be warm for me. Uh, one setting that you should care about is inside terminal is the automatic shutdown. So basically when you remotely start the car, if you don't you know, approach it and open the door within five minutes or 10 or whatever you set it, then um, it will uh, automatically shut down the engine. Uh, so, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, again, a simple app, but very useful. One thing I didn't like about the app is that it changes my comfort setting uh, for the unlock. So I like when I press unlock that all doors would unlock. So when I select this one all and save, uh, and also when I change the signal, not to signal the horn, so I clear this. Uh, what I noticed is, um, let me save this. So what I noticed is that uh, the system uh, or the kit will reset those to only open one door, uh, which is obviously the uh, driver's door, and it will signal the horn. Um, so that's one thing, they have it somehow hard-coded in the firmware of the kit. Uh, I messaged the vendor, uh, I'm not sure. Um, uh, I don't really expect them to, to change that firmware, but uh, that's something for you to keep in mind. Um, um, obviously it doesn't change any other settings, it's just those two settings. So it will always default to unlocking the driver's door. Uh, so then you would have to, you know, on the inside, press the unlock to open for, uh, you know, the passenger and the back doors. And uh, the other one is that it will always sound the horn when you lock the car. Well, it's an exciting day. So here's the kit 
for the keyless entry, passive keyless entry, remote starter. Um, as you can see, it comes with two keys, and I'm actually really impressed with their quality. They have like good weight to them. The plastic is thick; it's not cheap. Um, this is the push start button, and this is where you basically take your old key and you have to open it take the circuit that is inside you put it here and then you solder it and um, i opted for this option which is uh, bluetooth so you can install an app on your phone and then remotely open uh, the car uh, obviously you can do that uh, with the keys but i think the bluetooth has longer range and these are the antennas so there's two of them uh, I think you should put them on the front and win, uh, front and back windshields. And that's for the, your PKE function, uh, passive keyless entry. So when you approach the car, it will unlock, and when you walk away, it will lock. Some zip ties to secure these pieces. Uh, this is the wire harness um, that you will connect instead of what's currently in your Porsche to basically connect these components. So let's get right into it. Next step is to solder the key inside the circuit. Uh, so I opened the old Porsche key and uh, I took the circuit out. And here is how it looks. So starting from the top button, uh, it's the white wire on the right, orange on the left. Then second button from the top purple wire on the right brown wire on the left and then third button from the top is green wire on the right and blue wire on the left so the yellow black and red they don't do anything next step is I'm gonna put it through this kind of loop and secure it with a zip tie then close the box first thing is to remove the ignition uh, you can remove this uh, black rubber with your fingers and then you can slowly pry with a prying tool starting from the left all the way to the right of course be patient this is all plastic and this is uh, the location of the clips so don't put the prying tool where the clip is so you don't break it put between about that yeah, slowly pry it then there is this ring so you need to turn it counterclockwise so you can put a screwdriver here slowly push it and once it turns you can remove it then you can push the ignition inside as you can see the ignition is loose so again, you have to go counter clockwise with that ring to loosen it up. Now, to remove this piece, first you have to remove the one under it. And it really has only one torque screw. And then you pull it out. Of course, uh, remember to disconnect uh, the light and the OBD2 port. Uh, you pull it out. And then to remove this one, you have three Torx screws on the left, two on the right, one here at the bottom. And then the tricky part is um, the lever that releases your um, parking brake. So you will see in this cavity, this is where uh, this cable that rele uh, the release cable let's call it comes in so you remove it out of place and this would allow you to pull this thing out exposing another torque screw on the inside once you do that um, you pull the entire piece so it will be here so you just uh, pull it out over focus you pull it out and then you disconnect the cables for the uh, light switch and for the um, light 
dimness or darkness so and uh, yeah you pull it down and then you pull it out you see that it has these two tongues so you pull it out and now uh, you have it removed now you need to remove these uh, plastic covers and in order to do so you again use your uh, prying tool the only tricky part is these two guys on each side and one way you can do it is by using a screwdriver like this and there's a hole here and since this is like soft you can you can push it inside the hole to push the um, tongue out once you do that there's also a screw holding the lower cover so one on each side and then you can remove the covers entirely i decided to clean up the table to show you the final uh, wiring of the components so this is the box that has the soldered uh, wire uh, as you can see it connects uh, to this box with the green switches uh, the other uh, cable is the one that connects to the ignition cable coming from the car so if you compare it to the old key ignition you'll find that they are uh, identical so again the ignition cable that's inside the car will go into this uh, as for everything that's plugged here honestly you cannot mistake it because they're all different uh, this cable goes to the push button uh, the next one is for the Bluetooth uh, and again this is optional you have to buy it extra if you want the Bluetooth app on your phone um, I asked um, the guys on AliExpress to give it for free and they were kind enough to do so um, the extra port I believe it's for the GSM model so you can order a GSM model uh, which has like a SIM card and then you can start your car anywhere from any part of the world uh, it requires like a yearly subscription for the sim card first year is free and i believe every other uh, then the next year is twenty dollars anyway i didn't need it so bluetooth here and then the two antennas that you will put on your front and uh, rear windshields go here now the last cable those two things uh, so this is how you bypass um, the mechanism that locks your steering wheel uh, let me show you so you will unplug it from here okay and you will plug it in, uh, so like you, you see here you have to so you will plug it here and then this one will go into your steering wheel and that's how you kind of like you bypass that entire mechanism so basically yeah that's the wiring uh, I might uh, zip tie these two things together so they don't move around it's pretty tight under the steering wheel uh, we'll see i'll let you know uh, how things go so i ended up uh, zipping the two uh, pieces together like i mentioned then i put it uh, behind this metal plank and as you can see uh, the kit is now connected to the steering wheel lock and um, you should have the ports from this side because you will basically pull all the antennas to the side and put them on your front and back windshield by the way i connected my battery and tested everything before i close and uh, the kit is working so now it's kind of the final steps to connect um you know wire the antennas wire the switch um, and close everything to secure the start stop button um, you would use the rubber that was on this trim and you tighten the ring on it so now they're one piece and then uh, you glue it so basically I'm gonna use the, one of these epoxy two component glues and I'm trying to navigate here with one hand uh, so you'll see that there's a 
this is the right place where the rubber should land there's like a place for these two kind of horns and uh, then you glue it and these things cure in five minutes and so yeah that's how you secure the button I'm done connecting the antennas as you'll see the first one is here uh, I pried this cover a tiny bit put the wire all the way here down through here and into the box now for the other antenna by the way the wires uh, the two antennas have different length so make sure you use the uh, longer one for the rear so as you can see I put it behind the C pillar on my window here and the wire goes inside and sorry about the bloody fingers all the trying to shove the wire <laughs> so yeah it goes here and then it's very easy to put it here and just make sure you tuck it I still need to do it here tuck it uh, above the headliner so when you close the door you don't uh, close it on the wire so you go here again behind the B pillar here you don't need to pry anything by the way you just shove it with a, like a plastic tool and again you come here so as you can see I did it right here it's above the head inside uh, above the headliner all the way down and again back to the box as for the Bluetooth antenna I used double tape and put it here uh, I will test the app and see um, what's the range maybe I'll put it by the window but I don't know I think Bluetooth should be good here for now one thing I forgot is the low frequency antenna which is just a black wire that comes from the black box not the one uh, where we soldered uh, the key the other one uh, it has a, a black wire and that black wire is actually a high frequency antenna so you have two low frequency antennas which is the front shield and back shield and you have this one so what I did I took it all the way uh, again from the box here and uh, following this then from the inside and it ends here actually as you can see this is the black wire and it's just enough to reach here to be on your windshield